Hello and welcome. Today we're gonna talk about how the Soviet T-62 tank managed to stay in active service until the end of the Soviet Union. As it was introduced in 1961, it served the Soviet Union for 30 years even though the Soviets came up with much better tanks such as the T-72 and the T-64. And today we're gonna look at how it did that. So enjoy this video. So the main reason why it stayed in service for that time was because together with the T-55 it had undergone a major modernization program. A decade after the T-62 entered service it began to be shifted to a more or less secondary role. That was because it was being replaced by the T-62 and the T-72 main battle tanks. Very sad for the T-62 you might think just to get replaced like that. But no. The T-62 was smart because there were up to 14,000 units of the T-62 and they were all incorporated in the Soviet army. So a complete replacement of the T-62 wouldn't be that easy and would also take up a lot of time because of the immense size of the Soviet army. That's partially why the T-62 continued to serve the Soviet army until the end of the USSR. Because there were just so many in active service that you couldn't just replace them like that. However, some things happened in between. Throughout wartime it was a quite valuable asset, not just because of the solidly simple and basic design, but also because of a number of upgrades that were made. These upgrades included new tracks, a KDT-1 laser rangefinder and the cost of these upgrades was low and they were performed during routine repairs at a predetermined point in the life cycle of each tank. The T-62 formed a major part of the Soviet army's arsenal, quite obviously because 14,000 units of them were produced. But by the end of the 1970s, a new generation of NATO tanks had appeared on the horizon and on top of that, a lot of NATO's already existing tanks had undergone upgrades of some kind. Since the Soviet T-64s and T-72s were better than the T-62, the Soviets constantly tried to escalate their production to fully replace the T-62s. But they were not able to do so and eventually after trying many times they figured that still more than 25% of their tanks were T-62s. Which was why they had to come up with another plan. So in order to fill the gap they initiated a large modernization package at Nizhny Tagil which sought to bring the T-62M as well as its sister the T-55M and the T-55AM into service. Basically once the Soviets realized that there were just too many T-62s to replace they decided to upgrade them instead of replacing them. With this upgrade, they wanted to improve the armor protection and the fire control systems to the standards of a baseline Soviet main battle tank from the early 1970s. Basically so that they could keep up with the basic T-64A and the T-72. How they eventually modernized the T-62 and the T-55 was by improving the suspension and powertrain for better mobility. For firepower, they came up with the new 150mm APF SDS ammunition and a new gun launch Shakesna ATGM which the majority of modernized tanks could fire. Later, a large number of variants were derived from the basic M model of the modernization package. By the way, you probably noticed it but I'm gonna say it anyways. The M stands for modernized. The tanks that were modernized to the M standard officially entered service in 1983. When it comes to the scope of this whole program, a total of 2985 T55AM and T62M tanks were planned to be modernized from 1981 to 1985. 2200 of those would be T55 tanks and 785 would be T62 tanks. This program was a success. The first 10 modernized T-62Ms were delivered in 1981. In 1982, 40 of them were delivered. When the tank was officially accepted into service, 50 more of them were delivered in the same year. In 1984, the number of deliveries went up to 100 tanks and then finally in 1985, a whopping 600 of these tanks were delivered to the Soviet army. So the objective of this program was officially fulfilled. At the same time, production of the T-72 reached its peak. So you could say the Soviet army successfully modernized its tank fleet. Furthermore, the number of upgraded T-62Ms is actually higher than the official Soviet modernized versions, mainly because of the war in Afghanistan. There were a lot of basic T-54, 55 and T-62 tanks in Afghanistan which were quite vulnerable to the Mujahideen's handheld anti-tank weapons such as the RPG-7. And so, some troops took the additional composite armor from the T-62M modernization package and fitted them to their own tanks at local depots without incorporating the other components of the package. 
Like, they basically just stole the armor of other tanks and put them on their own tanks. But yeah, that was all I had to say for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you think I said anything that is not right or you think I should have added any additional information to this video, please let me know in the comments and share your knowledge. Besides that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.